Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our brand new show called Inside the Paint, where each week I'll sit down and go one-on-one -on -one with women's basketball head coach Rick Insull and men's basketball head coach Kermit Davis to break down their previous games and to also preview their up-and-coming games this week. Also this morning, I'll have a special guest to explain all the rule changes that happened over the summer in college basketball. But before I bring on Coach Insull to start the show, here is their highlight of their exhibition games against Coastal Georgia and Martin Methodist. Now I welcome in women's basketball head coach, Rick Insull. Coach, exhibition games don't count towards your record, but can you assess your team starting with the game against Coastal Georgia in a 106 to 41 victory? Well, I, you know, what we use the exhibition games for is to run the floor, you know, look at our chemistry, look at our substitution patterns, uh, trying to work the new rules in that we're dealing with now. Um, I think they're very handy. I, I like them better. I, it's kind of like a dress rehearsal, and I like them better than, than going into a scrimmage with no one in the gym. Um, we got some young freshmen that, that we needed to get into the game, and it gave them a chance to maybe work out a few of their nervous jitters before we go into the Virginia game. And I, I think we saw that from, from the first exhibition to the, the one last night. Now, with Martin Methodist, it was a little closer game, 85 to 53, a pretty close game after one quarter. Um, what, what did the Lady Raiders not do as well in the second exhibition game compared to the first, or is it just Martin Methodist was just a better team than Coastal Georgia? Well, they, they were two different type teams. Uh, Martin Methodist had, they were guard oriented. They shot the three. Uh, they've got a very scrappy, very, they're, they're ranked like, 16th in the country uh, in in NAI, so you know they're they're a pretty good basketball team. They're well coached. Uh, Coastal Georgia was well coached too, but they were two different type teams, and uh, they presented some problems with us. And we we needed that going in. We're going to have to defend on the perimeter, and that's one of the things that we really worked on was our defense on the perimeter. I thought last night against Martin Methodist, our post play defensively and offensively was not real good, and we've got to do a better job. Than, uh, than we did last night, if we're even going to be in the game against Virginia. Now, also, Martin Methodist, you guys had a lot of, a lot of missed free throws. You, you see the Lady Raiders this morning, they were practicing their free throws. Is that something you try to emphasize uh, in making free throws each game? Well, we've we, we kind of got a system, Kim, Tom, and Shalon. Uh, we want all of our players to knock down 100 threes a day and, a, and knock down 100 free throws a day. Uh, in a week's time, we want to go five out of those seven days. So at the end of that week, we have knocked down 500 free throws and 500 um, threes. So, you know, it's just, just kind of, you got to develop rhythm out there, Alan, and that's what we're trying to do. And, and then take that, you know, that's what we're doing outside of our practice and then take that to the practice floor and then hopefully take that to the game floor. Now, you talk about getting new players into the rotation with, with freshmen. You, you had high praise last night uh, for Alex Johnson. Um, can you talk about her game and, and where you see her going when, when the season starts Friday and also throughout the rest of the season? Well, unless something drastically changes in practice the next two days, she'll be starting Friday night. Um, we know Olivia, we know Bria, we know Ty. Uh, really what you want to look at in an exhibition is, you know, what players are going to that, that come in off the bench are ready to play. Uh, I thought Katie Collier did a good job. Uh, I, I'm very pleased with all of my freshmen, Jordan, Jess, the, they're, they're not ready yet, but they're high caliber players. And the more reps that they get in practice is gonna get, I hopefully get them ready before the end of the year where we can use them. We need another person on the perimeter to give help. Uh, and I think Jordan fits the where she can go inside and outside. So, 
you know, I, I'm real happy with what we've got right now. But right going into Friday night's game, I would say that you're looking at two in particular. That would be Alex. You'll be starting, and then you'll see Katie come off the bench. Now, you, you mentioned Katie. You, you mentioned last night you like to have three point guards, you I know, do. a solid backup, and then and then a third one just in case, you know, that was a good instance last year. Talk about how important it is for to see Katie Collier come off the bench and have good games uh, against Martin Methodist and Coastal Georgia, not necessarily just scoring, but also passing and distributing as well. Well, you you got to go back to Caroline Ward and had a, a, a terrible injury last year, and we're we're going to take our time with Caroline. Caroline's a has, was a walk on. She earned a scholarship. She started for two years. She's very important to our basketball team. And with her and Ty and now Katie, that gives us a chance to be aggressive. And also in the fact that we could move Ty to the two, like we did at the end of the year last year, and we can move Caroline to the two. So we got some interchangeable parts there, but we're gonna take our time with Caroline. Uh, Katie gives us a little different dimension. She, she's got great vision. She passes the ball up the floor pretty quick, where Ty moves the ball up the floor quick. Katie passes the ball. So you're looking at really three different type personalities at that point guard position. Now with, with Katie and, and Caroline, um, Caroline had a nasty injury last year, unfortunately. Um, with her coming back, I see the first exhibition game she didn't play. Um, the second one, she got a couple minutes. Is that something where you're just going to gradually keep increasing her minutes? Probably to see five or six minutes uh, Friday night. Uh, she wants to play more. She's a competitor. I mean, that's that's her M.O. And, you know, if you just know anything about her, it's, it, it, it's devastating to her not to be playing, but uh, we're not going to push this thing. Uh, we need her. We need her down the stretch. Um, her experience, her IQ, it's just uh, we can't replace that. And um, she's going to be a little bit mad not getting to play a whole lot, but uh, we're, we're going to when, when we have to have her down the stretch, she'll be ready. Now, you have two exhibition games under your belt with these new rules. The biggest rule going from four, two halves, or excuse me, two halves to four, four quarters. What are your feelings towards them? Have they changed how you approach the game at all, or is it still the same as last year? Well, I think you, you, we can do a little bit. We're able to set our goals a little better in the fact that you, you look at the quarters, you'd like to score 20 plus points in a quarter. And if you do, you're going to average 80. If you average 80 points a game, then uh, I'd say you're going to win a lot of games. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, the one of, I think the biggest effect that it's had on us be, is the five fouls. Once you get, you know, you get, you get two over the backs, you get a charge, you know, a reaching foul. Next thing you know, you've got six minutes to go in the first quarter and uh, it takes away from your aggression a little bit because every time you foul then, it's not a one and one, it's a two shot foul. So you're putting a post player on the line or you're putting a perimeter player on the line. And uh, uh, division one basketball teams, they shoot free throws pretty well. So you're looking, you know, I think the free throws are gonna go up some. Now, the Lady Raiders were three and three last year uh, against teams in the Power Five Conference with two of those wins coming at home. What would it mean for the, the team and also you, Coach, to not only start the season 1-0, but to get that victory over a Power 5 conference? Well, I think us, you know, Lady Raiders and Virginia both, this is a big game. It's a big game for Virginia because we're an RPI team, and that's what you want at the end of the year. How many teams did you beat in the top 50, top 25? Uh, I know last year uh, we were able to upset Miami, and at the end of the year Miami was in the top 25 in the country, so that was a big win for us. And also there were some teams, if you looked, uh, when they started talking about what teams did you beat, there was two or three teams that was able to say, hey, we beat Middle Tennessee, and we had a top 25 win. So uh, Kentucky being one of those teams. So, you know, it's a big game for both of us. I mean, it's not something that we're gonna come in and go through the motions. It would, it would mean a, the start to a great season for us, and I'm sure that they, the Virginia group feels the same way. All right, well, thank you for your time, Coach, and good luck on Friday against Virginia in your season opener. Later in the show, I'll go one-on-one -on -one with men's basketball head coach Kermit Davis, but up next, I'll bring on our special guest to explain all the rule changes on both the men and the women's side in college basketball. But first, here's Coach Stockson on the Blue Raiders triple overtime thriller against Marshall. I thought it was a great win tonight, really proud of our team. Uh, just phenomenal effort, the intensity that we played with. Uh, we talked all week about being tough at every position, that nobody was going to come out on that field and pick you up, that uh, you were going to be the toughest sucker out there. 
and that's how we played. I thought we played with relentless effort, great emotion, great energy, great intensity, and um, a never give up attitude. And uh, we had chances to put the game away <clears throat> earlier, and we weren't able to do it. Uh, you know, we shot ourselves in the foot with three turnovers in the first half in the red zone. Uh, but this team continued to battle. They continued to compete, and they never gave up. And this was a dead gum heck of a good win for us. I'm really proud of our team. James, 10-5, touchdown! This is a good win because nobody thought we could do it, you know, and except us. And that's what, you know, the greatest satisfaction in life is doing something that people don't think you can do. And, um, you know, so i just proud of this team, the resiliency and the toughness that they played with and uh, how we played. 45-50, Batiste 45, down to the 42-yard line. That was awesome. That was one of the most special wins I've ever been a part of. Um, just the highs and lows, you know, feeling like, you got it, then feeling like you're out. Just the back and forth, I mean, you know, just kind of wore on you. But, you know, that's, our team deserved that one, I think. Um, you know, we've been working to get back on track. And, um, you know, we've always believed in our locker room. We've always ignored the noise from the outside. And, um, you know, I think we kind of came out and proved that tonight. I literally cried at the middle of the field. So I'm very in shock. This is the biggest game I've ever been in. So um, that's something that is just crazy, you know. The Salute the Veteran game is, is very – near and dear to my heart, you know, me as a veteran, me as uh, having family and friends that are still in the service, have served in the service. So I'm just glad uh, we were able to do something special for them, get them a special win, acknowledge them, and uh, ultimately make this a good day. This team has been through a lot from, you know, some tough gut-wrenching losses to the injuries that we faced. Uh, and, and it would be easy for them to fold their tents and give up, but they haven't. And um, you guys probably get tired of hearing me say it all the time, how much I love and respect this team. And that's, and that's why it was evident today. There's the snap and the kick, and it is up. It is no good. He has missed four out of five today. Now the Raiders, all they need is three to win. Cody Clark lines it up. This for the win in the second overtime. The snap, the kick, it's up. It is no good. Here's the snap and the kick. This one is up and this one is good for Nick Smith. The snap. Here's the kick. It's blocked. Middle wins. Jeremy Cotrera blocks the kick. Game, set, match. Raiders win. Raiders win. Raiders win. Xavier was on the side of him. He was like, we about to get this block. And he schooled it in some, you know, like, I want you to go get it. And I told him I got you. When they hiked the ball, we went and we did it and we blocked. And that, that felt great, man. I, that felt really great to, to win, that, uh, win the end of the game like that in overtime with my teammates, everybody celebrating like that. Man, that was the best feeling ever. Really proud of what you did the last week and a half. What you did the last week and a half was shown on that field today. Welcome back to Inside the Paint. I now welcome in Eric Bruton, who is a women's official. Now, Eric, some people are unaware of all the rule changes uh, this year in both the men's and the women's. Can you inform us on, on all the rule changes that happen on the women's side? On the women's side, we've gone from two halves to four quarters, and there'll be 10 minutes, and then we have media timeouts, uh, either the first call timeout of the quarter above five minutes, or if there's not a call timeout, uh, we will go at five or below. So we'll have a media break then. So we'll go every five minutes if no timeouts are called uh, in each quarter. Uh, the other major rule change will be we'll shoot two shots on the fifth foul of each quarter. And on that, fi on that fifth foul, it's, it's important because kids are going to be shooting free throws. We're trying to speed up the game. Uh, that's why they end up going to four quarters. Now, uh, speaking of the four quarters, in my opinion, that's the biggest change in, in women's basketball is going from two 20-minute halves uh, to four 10-minute quarters. How, how do you think, from a, from a referee's point of view, it'll, it'll affect the game? I mean, there's been some exhibition games played, but in, in your opinion as a women's official, how do you think it's going to uh, affect the game? Well, actually, it's actually going to bring a little bit more excitement. Uh, kids will get a little bit more break in between the, those quarters. 
uh, the kids will be able to run, uh, strategy will be played in those each period for, for a referee. We stay focused the whole entire game. Uh, for us, it stays the same. Just make sure that all our calls are consistent and uh, calling by the points of emphasis what the NCAA wants us to call. So basically, it'll be fine for us. It'll be the same. Now, you, you mentioned the players getting break. Is that, is that a nice thing for you guys to also get a little more break instead of just a halftime break? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I try not to worry about the break times. I try to keep myself in shape. A lot of referees try to do the same thing. Uh, but yeah, it's a little break. It gives you a chance to refocus, uh, get our attention and think about things that occurred in the first quarter and second quarter. Uh, so it actually does help. Now, on, on the men's side, the talk of shortening the shot clock from 35 seconds to 30 seconds has been happening for the last couple of years. It, it finally happens. From a, from a you know, official's point of view, how do you think that's going to affect the game for the men? Uh, I believe it's going to actually speed up the game, uh, that the players have to shoot more, score more, uh, that cuts down the possessions time, that they got to actually get the ball up. Uh, so it actually puts a little bit more excitement that the ball has to go in the basket. So if shoot more, more points. Yeah, and, and then other than you know the shot clock for the men and for the women going from two 20-minute halves to, to four 10-minute quarters, other than those two rules, is there any other rule change that you think might have an impact on the game? Our biggest change would be advancing the ball in the last minute. Uh, they want to put a lot of excitement in the last minute of the fourth period. Uh, if a team has not advanced the ball, they call a timeout, they can move the ball to the 28-foot mark uh, table side. Uh, so that's a nice little tool that you can do, uh, but holding those timeouts are going to be important as well. So. Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be it's going to be more excitement for the women um, being able to get that, you know, that game winner, call a timeout, set up a set play from the side. Maybe you see a game winning three pointer um, or something. But also for the women, do you see as far as like the, the um, as far as like for or excuse me, for the men being able to not hand check out on the perimeter, um, keeping that, you know, have to keep your hands out. But in the paint, you, you can get a bent elbow in um, from a referee's point of view. They're trying to say that it's going to um, make it less physical, but d what, what's your take on that? Well, in the women's game, we definitely keep the physicality out of the ball game. I, they want to do the same thing for the men, obviously. Uh, freedom of movement is huge. Uh, if players are able to move and get free, uh, they can get into the offenses better. They can score. They get freedom to score more points. So uh, in the men's game, I'm sure it'll be a, a big change for them. Uh, we've been doing it on the women's side for a while. Uh, so hopefully the, the game will get smoother and cleaner. All right, well, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, talk about all these rule changes. Thanks again, Eric. Well, we'll take a quick commercial break, and then I'll go one-on-one -on -one with men's basketball head coach Kermit Davis to wrap up this week's episode of Inside the Paint. A degree is more than a piece of paper. Your college experience should be exciting, engaging. You should feel proud of your university. With over 140 majors taught by a highly respected and caring faculty and hands-on classes in state-of-the-art facilities, MTSU provides you the training and expertise you need to excel. Middle Tennessee State University is devoted to your success. Discover the MTSU difference. Become True Blue. A degree is more than a piece of paper. Your college experience should be exciting, engaging. You should feel proud of your university. With over 140 majors taught by a highly respected and caring faculty and hands-on classes in state-of-the-art facilities, MTSU provides you the training and expertise you need to excel. Middle Tennessee State University is devoted to your success. Discover the MTSU difference. Become True Blue. Welcome back to Inside the Paint as I welcome in head coach of the men's basketball team, Kermit Davis. Now coach, your first exhibition game is in two days against Faulkner University. What do you hope to learn about your team after that game? 
Well, I think our team, like a lot of teams in college basketball, we've kind of opened up a little bit later with our first exhibition game. We've scrimmaged Ole Miss, but I think our guys are ready to play each, uh, play somebody else, tired of going against each other. Faulkner, who's coached by the former Lipscomb coach, very well coached. They've already played about uh, four games. They come in with experience. Uh, we hope to get to, to play about 12 or 13 guys in the game. and. Uh, uh, I'd love to see a great unselfish play and uh, hopefully some toughness comes out defensively. All right, now, before you came on, we were discussing rule changes for college basketball. The bigger ones coming on the women's side, but there also are some big ones on, on the men's side. Um, have they affected how you will approach the game this year as compared to years past? You know, our clock has gone from 35 to 30, as everyone knows. I don't know if that'll affect uh, what people may think. I think the way it's going to be officiated uh, with the freedom of movement, I think that's going to be the biggest change. Uh, I think we've done a pretty good job in the scrimmages. We've brought in some really good quality officials two or three times uh, at Ole Miss. I didn't think our team fouled extensively, you know. So, so hopefully we'll do a good job of still being able to pressure the ball and playing without our hands and uh, keeping people from getting the one and one. Now you mentioned first the the sh before I touch on the the freedom of movement, the shot clock 35 to 30. Do you think you're going to see more more pressing, kind of a soft press, a, a three quarter court press? to and then moving back into like a zone type thing to where they're going to make you waste the shot clock and not have much time to get into your offense? Yeah, you know, some people think that maybe the shot clock going to 30 points may go down. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, you know, because of a lot more three-quarter court pressing, uh, a lot more zone, a lot more uh, forced perimeter shots. So so we'll see. Our, our scoring, I think, has, has been good. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think it's going to be that big a difference in college basketball for the five seconds. Now, the the freedom of movement down low, you can have a bent elbow, um, but up top, it's it's you know no contact. Um, they get rid of the the five second. Does does that affect your team and how you guys play? Not only up top uh, above the three point line, but also below. Well, you know, we're a physical defending team, and we're still going to try to be a physical team without using our hands. You know, in the post, you used to, you could rest your arm on them, and now you can kind of guide them and, and, and take contact. Uh, I think that's going to be, we had a couple where we extended it against Ole Miss that they call both ways. Uh, we got to, I hope we don't get like the NBA where they just guide guys, and there's nobody can really even score around the goal in the NBA. So, uh, so hopefully that it's just rest, it's not going to steer people, and that guys can still have freedom of movement to score around the goal. Now, you guys still haven't played an exhibition, but as far as with your, your scrimmage in practice, who are a couple of players that have really stood out to you both on the offensive side, but also the defense side as well? You know, Perrin Buford has been a really consistent player for us. Uh, he's been a great leader. Uh, I think Reggie Upshaw has really got nicked up a little bit and missed about three or four days. He's back at, at full strength. Darnell Harris over the last three or four days. He played really well in our scrimmage. He had 26 points in our, in our blue-white scrimmage on, on Saturday. And I think Jacob Ivory at the point has, has kind of come to the forefront with his toughness. And, uh, but we could go through a lot of guys. There's been a lot of improvement. And I think that, uh, that our team will have depth that we'll maybe play 10 and 11 players. Now you talk about depth. Have you, you know, there's, there's kind of a toss up at, at the point guard. Are you from now on moving forward with, with Jacob Ivory right now just, just to see for the first exhibition game? Yeah, right now if we had to start today, Jacob would start at the point and Quay's going to get a lot of time. Uh, Jaquan Raymond, who, who played really well for us down the stretch in the conference tournament, really is our primary point guard because Jacob was out with a concussion. So we've got three really capable point guards, uh, but there's constant competition for playing time all the time. And it's a lot of less emphasis on starting. I think a lot of guys, we need a lot of balanced minutes. Now, w with Coach so earlier, he mentioned he loves having three solid point guards that he can have at his disposal. Do you kind of feel that, that, that way about your team as well? Well, you know, in the conference tournament, uh, really Jaquan Raymond what was it. You know, Jacob got hurt. Uh, we had, had suspended Jaquel Richmond, so really kind of played with, with, with one, and then we had to kind of shift guys over. So uh, it is a nice luxury that we have three-point guards to have depth through an entire season with foul troubles and nicks and bruises. It's, it's a plus. Now, Giddy Potts came on late last year, you know, with, with the three ball. Is he, is he improving his game still more, not just around the three-point line, but also working, working on driving and whatnot on the offensive side? You know, that's what I, I, I'm constantly talking to Giddy about. He's, he's, he's as good a shooter as in our league, no question about it. He's got himself in great shape. 
he's got to drive the ball. He's a really, really outstanding free throw shooter, but he didn't get to the line very much because he kind of played out in the perimeter. So we've got to get Giddy to guard a little more physical and, uh, and drive the ball and get himself to the free throw line. Now, you open up the season against Murray State. They came down here last year and won by 19. Can you talk about the game last year and, and how they were able to not only jump on you from the beginning, but to also come away with the win here? Yeah, you know, it's been the last two years. We went to Murray State two years ago and had them at one time, I think it was 66 to 38, one of their, their worst losses on their floor. And it was kind of the same thing. They had a, basically a new team. We had this whole returning team. And then and they, they just kind of put it right back on us last year. You know, it was our kind of opener of a really good team. They had a lottery pick and pain and a really outstanding veteran group. We got 10 new guys and they popped us. They did. So uh, they've lost good players. Murray has always recruited really well. It's a tough place to play, but I think it's a really good rivalry game and it's a, it's a game I think both teams look forward to. Now, with, with Murray State, what can you expect from them on both the offense and, and the defense? What do you expect from them in your season opener? You know, it's a new coach. Matt's a good guy. He's been, and that's what they've had success with, of hiring from within. I'm sure, like a lot of Murray teams, they're going to be a very well physical, man-to-man uh, -man team. Uh, you know, they, they've been really good offensively. Uh, they've got some new point guards, but in their exhibition games and their scrimmages, we've seen where they've played really well. So I think it'll be your typical athletic, hard-playing Murray team who's been very good at home. Now, you can only control what, what you can control, and that's your team. What, what's it going to take for you guys to go up to Murray State and open the season with a victory and start 1-0? Well, you know, we, we've got to go up there and, and what's our identity of being able to get back defensively. Murray State always plays really fast at home. Uh, we've got to get our defense set. Uh, we've got to do a good job of sharing the ball. Hopefully our veteran players with the experience that we have coming back will, will help. And, uh, and I think just like all coaches, you're trying to put what you've practiced into the games and uh, hopefully that's good enough. All right, Coach. Well, we appreciate you taking the time and we wish you good luck on Thursday in your exhibition and then also in your season opener against Murray State. That'll do it for this week's edition of Inside the Paint. We appreciate you all for watching. Join us again next Tuesday at 10 a.m. for all your news in Blue Raider sports.